up guys and welcome back to another episode of channel chasers honestly i could not think of a clever intro for this one so we're just gonna do a regular what's up intro uh how you guys doing tonight welcome to the latest episode of the channel chasers podcast as always i am your host jay from miss jay's reviews and joining me as always is my friend my co-host my self-proclaimed sidekick brian kersey how you doing tonight brian Hello, peoples. I'm doing okay. Um, honestly, if we had thought of doing a themed intro, it probably might have been like in poor taste. That's what I'm saying. I was like, this show tackles way too many serious topics for me to do anything funny or jokey, and I couldn't think of a song that matched anything. Uh, uh, with, but besides anything that wasn't like super sad in general, and we're in sad times right now, so we don't need more sad. Yup. Because uh, the only other thing that I could think of is ready to get sad. Yeah, we're already there. Yeah, we <laughs> are. Already... Yeah, we are already there. Um, but yeah, I subjected Brian to this sad uh, because, well, I- I'm gonna be honest, I did not feel like you know prepping for a show and <laughs> watching further episodes and this show had just wrapped up about a, you know a week ago so i figured perfect timing also to be fair i had been meaning to see it um you can't look it up for proof but again hate to sound like a broken record but yeah we, we say this every week but yeah we did we did an episode of the first season on my youtube channel back in the YouTube vidcast days. Uh, but, again, no longer exist. All right. I think it was, honestly, like, one of our first, like, serious shows. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. We, I mean, other than the 13 Reasons Why episodes, I mean, the 13 Reasons Why episodes were oh, pretty yeah. heavy. Mm-hmm. But, but, yeah, no. But, I mean, this is, like, an adult 13 Reasons Why in a way, a little bit. Um, oh, indeed. Indeed. But uh, yeah, in case the title and the thumbnail have not given it away yet, uh, we are talking about ABC's hit drama, A Million Little Things. Uh, So yeah, this show is absolutely phenomenal, Uh, especially when it comes to like character drama and just making you feel and making you cry. Like everybody needs a good cry. It's healthy. Um. And this show will give you a healthy dose of tears. Um, I know it did that to me on a weekly basis <laughs> this entire season. Um, and I got a lot of good interactions from the cast. The cast is really nice. Uh, I did I did this thing I did this thing in my reviews and my review tweets where I would like give an MVP performance uh, each week, and I'd, so I'd mm-hmm. like I'd like tag the cast member. And over, like, except for maybe two episodes, the cast member has replied to me. I, I've given it to Sophie, um, Maggie, um, Danny, um, Gary multiple times. <laughs> James Rode is probably tired of me by now because I've given it to Gary a few times. <laughs> and uh, even, even Eddie once. Catherine does not have a Twitter, but I, I praise the hell out of Catherine all the time. Uh, Catherine mm-hmm. is my favorite character. Um, but yeah, um, in case you guys don't know what the show is, if you want a quick, brief synopsis, essentially, uh, this is about a group of friends who are struck by a tragedy when uh, one of their linchpin friends, John, takes his own life. And basically, the entire group has to rebuild and, you know, restructure their own lives and, you know, Learn lessons from this great tragedy. Um, also, yeah. learn about like all the bad stuff that was going on in their lives and yeah. how to move past that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, as per as you would expect from a show with this type of like premise, um, a lot of it focuses on um, a lot of mental health aspects, which you know. I am so glad TV has, you know, put a much stronger focus on now because it's Mm -hmm. always really important to maintain mental health and like, you know, keep track of it and never be ashamed of it and never be ashamed to ask for help when it comes to this type of stuff. Well, 
not only that, but this show, it not only tackles mental health, it tackles, like, domestic abuse, um, all addiction, it tackles all different types of stuff, and in the episodes where they really go ham on one subject, they'll, they'll end it with a, with a, for help, contact this number if you're yeah. going through this. Yeah, which I which I really appreciate. I mean, I know that's kind of mm-hmm. like the standard for TV nowadays, but I again, I just can't not, you know, give a shout out to them for like taking the extra care to be like, so here's a resource. Even if it's even if it's as basic as the suicide hotline or like, you know, um some kind of crisis management center. Like who you never know, somebody in the audience maybe that's exactly what they needed. Um so, and like, I didn't, important. and I didn't know this until until I watched like one of the episodes in season two. Apparently, behind the scenes, uh, the people who made it actually have a friend who passed away, mm-hmm. who killed himself. Yep. So and uh, so in one particular episode, which is really big, which we'll talk to when we get to spoilers. They end on like a full on PSA with the cast and crew coming in and saying, It's never the option. Contact this number if you're having. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, so, it's just this show fights the stigma. It really does. Stigmas. It really does. And it's not like full ham serious type show there's a lot of there's a ton of comedy like there i mean there's a a good balance of levity it's not just all about making you cry they make you laugh just as much and i feel like that though because of that the parts that make you cry make you cry harder because you've seen you see both the highest of highs and the lowest of lows on this show Mm -hmm. and that's really important and um um one of the things that shocked me when we first initially, like, watched... The, I wouldn't first initially watch the show for the first time. It's, um... It's got, like, TV all-stars in it. Like, its main cast are all, like, prominent TV actors from the past. Yep. Like, the main guy from Grimm. If you guys remember that show? Yep. Um, the... For a long time, the only chick in... The Hawaii Five O remake. Yep. Uh, <laughs> which I, that actually I heard uh, wrapped up recently, after like it, a decade or so. Yeah, this current season is going to be its final. Uh, I I heard no, but like it had the season finale, like the, fin- the series oh. finale, like I think last week. Oh, okay. That goes to say how much I know about that, but um. I I, never... I I just know because I saw H fifty trending all over Twitter, and I was like, "Wait, what's H fifty? Y- y'all y'all are putting letters and numbers, and that scares me. What is that?" Oh, uh, I was like, "What's H fifty? It's like, oh, Hawaii five. Oh, duh. Okay, thank God. I thought this was a new thing. <laughs> yeah, like, no, I, I was okay on the show, but I definitely stopped paying attention when she left. Mm-hmm. But she plays the best character on this show. So, yeah, and you then know. you've also got Jake, as he said, James Odeo from Psych. Yep. And you got uh, what's his name? The guy who plays Rome. I know him most from Weeds. That's where I know him most from. Where well, he definitely was not like Rome. Um. Uh, and then did you? And also, like you know, I only I only knew this after like some googling. Did you know that uh, like Maggie uh, Maggie Bloom uh, was actually in one of my favorite underrated uh, 2010s comedies, Seventeen Again. She was the young version of the wife in Seventeen Again, and also she was the bitch lawyer in Thirteen Reasons Why season two that represented the school. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hair makes a big difference. Hair yep. makes a big difference. In hair and makeup, yep. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's a... Uh, but, yeah, the, the cast is really good. All the performances um, are top-notch. Yeah, and to the fact where uh, 
surprise, surprise, season two recurring character played by a YouTuber. Yeah, an OG, like, YouTube, like, cover artist slash musician. Slash, slash, um, sketch person who openly talks about mental health all the time and is, like, real, real about her life. Yep. Um, Anna Kana. Which I honestly did not know that was her until you had mentioned it, and then I, like, I saw and I was like, oh, shit, that is her. Um... But yeah, uh, we oh also also another Maggie is in this Maggie yep. Sawyer people. <laughs> uh, anyone who watches Supergirl, if you wondered where uh, Maggie Sawyer went to, uh, she went to go date Gary. <laughs> well, first of all, she went to Punisher, then she went to another show, and now she's going to Gary. She been like hopping all over all the shows. Listen, man, I just want uh, I. We'll get to it when we get to it, but I'm definitely here for her for this because I ships it real hard. Um, but yeah, we'll get there when we get there. Um, it, and you know, case in point to the cast, uh, like I said before, I gave the I gave an MVP performance a couple times to Sophie's actress and Danny. Man, like the kid actors are amazing. Even Theo, mm-hmm. Theo is great, I especially. Love Theo. Especially season two, Theo, they really test that little young actor. He he has he has so much sass. He is definitely Catherine's kid, um, and you know he's also he's got a good combination of both Eddie and Catherine in him. He's got like Eddie's stubbornness, but Catherine's sass. Hmm. And I, I I dig that. I dig that. Also. Um, this is just kind of a sign of modern times. I, uh, you know, this is a minor spoiler for season one, but I love that they handle Danny's coming out just so nonchalantly. Like, he's so mm-hmm. nervous. He's so nervous. He's about to cry or whatever. And, like, the entire family is just like, oh, cool, dude. Nice. Yeah. Indeed. Like, it's it's so good. I I really enjoyed that, and I I just really like Danny's character. He has so much like sage wisdom. That little kid. It's just it's so great. Um, you know I've I've, I've tweeted him before. I'm like, dude, you are giving the adults the business, and I love it. Indeed. Uh, uh, it's just it's yeah, it's pretty awesome, and he's also really nice. Like. All, all the all, all the cast members that I've had the chance to interact with via social media are like really nice. I'm glad. Um, but yeah, so now let's go ahead and jump into spoilers and talk about season two. All right. Wah, wah, spoiler alert. So, season one. I'm not gonna lie to you. I I hated both Delilah and Eddie. But season two has at least turned me around mostly on Delilah and all the way on Eddie. Eddie, mm-hmm. Eddie I'm, Eddie's done a complete 180. He's actually gotten all his shit together and is great. Eddie, like, Eddie is like season two. He's like, okay, I've kind of gotten my shit together mostly minus the whole baby thing. And now I, mean, I, need... I mean, even with even with the baby, like he's on good, mm-hmm. you know, after after the, you know, bullshit Delilah tried to pull in the beginning, you know, he's on good terms with Delilah. Catherine is building a friendship with Delilah again. Yeah. So but good. Also, also, on top of his own personal stuff that he's dealing with, he sees the group as a whole and decides to step up and try to be the new John. Yeah, definitely. He's, you know, reining everybody in together. And, um, you know, he's, you know, taking big steps in his career. Mm-hmm. Maybe not as, maybe not as like a solo musician anymore, but he's, you know, playing a mentor to, um, you know, um, Dakota, who is Anna, Anna, Anna Akonda's character. Yep, I- indeed. And they, even have set up some stuff for a season three with her, which is going to get probably intense. 
Yeah, but at least they're not going the route where I thought, where I was hoping they were not going to go. I was like, okay, thank God. I'm glad we're not yeah. doing this at all. Let's not. Yeah, Can we not? it would have been like, uh, does he have a type? He, I mean, what? he clearly. I mean, he clearly does. But like, also, let's not. Which the um, cool thing about that is, little Theo pointed that's it my, out. That's what I'm saying. That was my favorite part. That was my. That was my he, he, he was like, we're only friends. friends. Like how you're you gonna were have friends a baby with, with Aunt Delilah. I was like, oh, you're going to have a baby with her, too? And he walks up. I was like, yo, 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 they gave Theo the heat. They gave Theo the heat. Yep. Oh, man, that was that was wonderful. Um, Yep. And uh, one episode where I liked him where it wasn't really his episode, just want to point out, is the episode where Colin goes missing. Yeah, and he stays there with Gary the whole and time. And he, like, uh, yeah, steps up to, like, coordinate everyone. He doesn't always do the best jobs, but yeah. he's trying. I mean, because he's learning. I mean, and and that's the important thing with Eddie, right? He yeah. is trying. Like, yes. you know, he, he realizes that, you know, there's no forgiving what he did, or at least easily forgiving what he did. But he is actively making an effort. And, you know... Once Sophie sees that in both Delilah and Eddie, that's when she's willing to give them a chance and, like, you know, willing to understand their perspectives. Yeah, um, I mean, the man was beating himself up so much that that his best friend, who he slept with his wife, he was so beating himself up that, according to the timeline of the show, it took him almost a year to go see his grave. Yeah. I mean that that and that scene with Selfie where they went that was just that was so good, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So um, let's see, so, let's see. Um, sp- you know, staying on Eddie a little bit, but connecting to Eddie, uh, Catherine. I absolutely uh, like. I've always said I uh, like. I absolutely love Catherine. She is one of the best TV spouses on TV, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I love that she is finally getting her own thing, her own place. And she actually feels like a part of the group, which, mm-hmm. you know, was one of my complaints uh, for the beginning of season one. Uh, but, like, by the end of season one, and definitely in season two, she feels like a member, like a legit member of the group. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And, you know, she addresses that, too. And, I, I, like, I'm, I'm really I'm really happy to see how far that that, that whole dynamic has come, you know. Yeah. She's not just fr- she's not just friends because like her, they're her husband's friends. She's also genuinely friends with them. Yeah, indeed. Um it's kind of like a slower version of what happened with Maggie, but also the thing with Catherine that I like about her is they gave her they gave her a couple stories involving her and Actually, a couple of them had nothing to do with any other, like, member. It was her own personal story. Yeah, yeah. Like, like with the law her, firm. Her, her, yeah, exactly. I was just about to say, like, her being looked over because she's a woman and her only being uh, given cases because she's a woman. And, well, uh, well, I love the twist to that, though, because we find yeah, out that it, that it, wasn't yeah, yeah. the case. It, it, turned out that, it turned out that wasn't the case. It turned out the client is homophobic, and the reason they wouldn't give Catherine the case is because she works so closely with Carter, who is gay. And and still, upon hearing that, she was yeah, like, she stands that's, up for still, Carter. that's still screwed up. <laughs> Fuck yeah. you guys. Fuck this shit, I'm out. She straight up leaves with, you know, with Carter. And, uh, you know, she ends up starting her own firm, which, you know, is going to be tough, but I'm, I'm glad she's doing it. And um, also to help the, like, set de- design department, but also in-universe help um, confirm that they are, that she is part of the group. Where is her new law firm now? The yep, basement it's in the same of- building. Yeah, it's in the basement of the restaurant because John John uh, like negotiated it as part of the lease for the restaurant, and they were like, "Well, John would want you to have this. Like, he believed in you too. So you know what? Here, you take it. We only use it for minimal storage. Mm-hmm. 
So it, it kind of reminds it kind of reminds me of like the Nelson and Murdoch office from like early Daredevil. Oh yeah, a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think that was really cool. Um, and you know, through Catherine, we get introduced to Darcy, aka Maggie Sawyer, and love her, love her so much. It, it's um, like. <laughs> It's been a while since I've been, like, introduced to a triangle, an adult triangle. So, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. It wasn't even a triangle in my eyes because I was kind of tired of Maggie by that point. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I personally was not into Maggie. I feel like, I feel like Maggie... She was. She's. She's been a. She's been a little too selfish and not considerate of Gary. In in any of this, especially at with the, her whole plot, which we're gonna we're gonna jump to Maggie in a second. I can. Like, I can I, see that. I, I got some shit to say about Maggie because I Although, love the actress. And uh, and I actually do really like Gary with. With. Uh, Darcy. Her name is Darcy. Darcy. I wanted to say Maggie, but that's Darcy. It's okay. I called her. I, I called her Maggie Sawyer the whole time. I, I I differentiated by saying Maggie Bloom and Maggie Sawyer. But yeah, Darcy. I really I really like her, and I kind of like the fact that the man child ended up with a military. Group. So because so. because here's my thing, right? Um, I think this is a like Darcy is the type of relationship that Gary needs. They feel, I mean, I know this is more of a YA term, but they feel more endgame than Maggie does. Maggie was the relationship he needed to get him on the route where he needed to be, but I don't think they are good for each other um, in a non-friendship way. Like, they definitely are good as friends, but I don't, I think now past that, they're not, that they shouldn't, get together because they don't bring out the best parts of each other. I don't know if I completely agree with that, but but uh cause honestly the way that I got the feeling is uh they're trying to Ross and Rachel it. I no, please no. Although I will admit that I kinda don't like how they Handled Ross and Rachel, to be fair. I don't think any... I mean, there are a few people that do, but I don't think... I think most people can agree that was messy. Yeah, indeed. I mean... And we don't even want to talk about the Rachel and Joey thing. Yep. Uh, but even but they were like, though. Even though... Even they were like, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Episode 2 into them actually being together, they split up. But back but, to a million yeah. little things and Darcy. Darcy is a cool character and she's not just one note. She's not just military. She's not just single mom. She's a very complex character. And I, I and I think and I love the I love the callback and I, I and the reason why I definitely think Darcy is more serious and more of like an end gamey type is because of how they paralleled Maggie and Darcy um, Darcy, Maggie and Darcy's introductions to the group um, and like to really show like that Gary is in a different stage of his life because you know when he brought Maggie when, when he brought Maggie to John's funeral that was after they had hooked up in the bathroom during the cancer support group, uh, support group meeting yeah um, she brought Maggie to John's funeral she, Dar- um what you call it? Gary brings Darcy to Baby John's birth. Well, he's no longer Baby John, unfortunately. We'll get to that, but you know what I mean. Well, uh, didn't he bring her to the John party, like the adult? No, John? no, he 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 was not. Uh, she wasn't uh, like she wasn't at the party with him. Like they weren't dating at that point. Like oh. they were talking. They weren't. They were talking, but they weren't dating. True. Like this is the first time. Like they were together, holding hands, and like 
you know, coupley. Maggie and Gary started off like that, and it, like kind of again, it shows the immaturity in both Gary and Maggie. And I, this is Gary's first mature relationship, and I want it to stay. I want it to stay I, personally, right? Like, and I don't want to sound like a Maggie hater. I don't want to sound like a Maggie hater because I don't hate Maggie and I love the actress, but Maggie right now does not have is not in the same emotional mature state that Gary is in Maggie hasn't experienced anything outside of Gary so she doesn't really know what she fucking wants and she needs this time away like I I think it's important um and I'm not saying I would be mad if like Gary and Maggie got together. I mean, I would be a little, I'm not going to lie, I would be a little upset, but I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't be like, no, this isn't right. I, I would be okay with it, but I would need to see Maggie be on, like, an Eddie level of character before I could accept her with this new mature Gary. Well, to be fair, even though I'm not saying that Maggie and Gary should be in game, um, mm-hmm. to be fair, at that final episode, you did see some like gears start to turn her in her head, and start and so to see some and, growth. And, and, and that's the thing that I loved about this episode because they did not do the cliche thing of where like or Gary mm-hmm. like goes and chases the girl. He calls her out on her bullshit and was like, "No, fuck you. I'm t- I'm tired of your shit. I thought you know all my problems." Where I, I thought I was causing you all, you know, I thought I was causing you all the problems. No, honestly, it was it was give and take. You hurt me as much as I hurt you, and I I don't need mm-hmm. that right now. I'm happy. I don't need you. I don't need you to complicate my life. Which, but I don't want you out of my life. I do which, appreciate you as my friend, but. I don't think we are good together, especially not well, right now. I am happy. He did push him to do things like his mom, but then he was like, he was, I did all this for you, and then you were just still like, no. That's what I'm saying. So, like, yeah, like, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, that. that's why for a bit I was definitely team fuck Maggie. Uh, like, just, just for a little, I mean, like, I understand, like, but like Maggie, you can't you can't deny that that was fucked up. Like, well, also since we're talking about Maggie and fucked up, why don't we talk about the fucking bullshit that was different? Yeah, uh, yeah, right. What the fuck, man? The whole shit with Eric. Yo, why? Played by Dipper Pines from Gravity Falls. That Which really fucked me up. Yeah, that was crazy. How do you lie about having somebody's... Yo, what? That's a heart, man. Not only that, but you go as far as to fall in love with them? And that yeah, that uh, yeah, no, that's, the... uh, yeah, that's super fucked. And I mean, Maggie was already in a pretty vulnerable state. Um, And like, you know... Going back to the thing with Gary's mom, while I do appreciate her doing that, she didn't do that. She didn't push Gary to do that for Gary. She wanted Gary to do that so that she could kind of vicariously live through Gary because she didn't really get that chance. Oh, with like true. with but... like with like uh, her brother and shit. So like. That was still super selfish. That's why I can't like. I mean, I like. True, Maggie, I but... get it. I get it now. But but yeah, going back to the real quick, that Eric stuff was just fucked. And um, I want to know something. Okay. Why did they get such a big name actress to play his fiance? Yeah, right. They got the. She's a lead in her own show, Younger. Mm-hmm. And yet she comes on for like two episodes for like quick couple minutes each episode. What? The I mean, hell? I, I I guess because it's you know because this is a big show and they wanted to get a big actor. But I mean, yeah, no, I feel so you. Just a small role. No, I feel you. I definitely feel you. I I agree with you on that one. 
Um, also, real quick, since we're talking about plot lines that don't really make sense, I know we kind of jumped away from Eddie, but real quick, that whole the whole Alex plot line, I feel like was completely useless and unnecessary. Because Which one was that again? The one, the one where he thought that he killed his uh, first crush, Alex. We all, yeah. know he, we all know that he didn't kill her. We all know that he was actually trying to save her while drunk, but he couldn't save her because he was drunk. Also, also, um, the thing and that the- I didn't get about that is. Why keep it a secret? No, okay, no, 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 not even why keep it a secret. My my thing is, Lindsay, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you telling him this out of nowhere over a decade later when you know he has gotten his shit together and one thing, one slight thing could set him off the edge and you tell him, oh yeah, you could have possibly murdered this girl you had a crush on back in the day? I thought they were fooled together. No, they weren't together. They messed around, but they weren't together. It's th- oh, okay. Like they My were bad. like they both they mutually had a crush on each other, or at least she had a big crush on him. Because the way they were talking, she was like she uh, like the si- uh not his sister, but the girl's sister was like she had such a huge crush on you. So that like that implies to me that they weren't together together. Well, he also gave her a bracelet that she never took off. Yeah, so but I mean, yeah, that 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 just means they mutually liked each other, but never got I, together. I get you, but but yeah, that was that was useless, honestly. Yeah, because um, like we all know that he didn't actually kill her. Like they were they were trying to set it up like it was this big thing, and I'm just like, we all know he also, didn't kill her. You want to talk about weird, useless, and like apparently useless characters? Andrew. Oh, he's that restaurant guy who just disappears after Delilah gets cop boyfriend? Yeah, restaurant guy just after, disappears. After he reveals that his dead wife is Is not dead. dead. Yeah, she yeah, she isn't dead. She's just kind of in a coma and he's allowed to date, which I guess is understandable, but still kind of like iffy. Well that's kind of I think that's kind of the reason why Delilah was like, yeah, you've got enough shit on your plate. (laughs) Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, no. no. Also, like, now, I guess that makes a good transition to jump into Delilah. Um, So, yeah, like, you know, at first I was very much like, I hate Delilah. Delilah's the worst. Especially what Delilah tried to pull with, like, Eddie and the whole father thing. I was like, oh, come on. And the France shit? Yeah, what you trying to fucking dip to France? Like, what? Hold on. No, that is completely unfair. And I love it, because Catherine went full alpha mode and was like, you do not want to fuck with me legally. I will take you to court, bitch. And you know how good of a lawyer I am, because I got you your house back when you were fucked. Yep. (laughs) Do you really want to? Because I'll do it. I that yeah that was I was like oh Catherine bring the big energy bring it uh but yep. yeah loved that um but um I did love I Delilah I um you know I, I I was talking a lot of crap about Maggie but one of my one of my favorite things about the season is Delilah's friendship with Maggie I think that was really strong uh really solid like mm-hmm. I liked all the Maggie stuff that did not involve Gary <laughs> like. Anything that didn't True. involve Gary, Maggie was great. Gary or Eric. Well, yeah. I mean, I feel like both of those are connected. Like those have to, both those both have to do with her love life. So anything that's not connected to her love life, besides the accidental hookup that she did for Delilah, like you know, uh, that was good. That was good. Yeah, the hookup that actually has become something, which is really yeah, cool. Which and and I also just love the hilarious moment. Sophie yeah. and Danny are both thirsting over the cute cop in the hospital, and oh, like when and, when Danny, and, yeah, Danny, Danny's like, I saw him first. Sophie's like, I'm older, and then Danny's like, oh, Hey, you know, they, they call me Dan. My, hi, my name's Daniel. I mean, they call me. Da- I'm, most people call me Danny. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, and he's like, we could use help, but nobody's helping us. Oh, 
you could help us. You could help us. And he's like trying to bat his eyelashes and shit. And then Delilah steps out like, oh, hey, sweetie. Oh, looks like you met my kid. <laughs> and, then just, and then they're just like, shit. It's my friend. And then and then Sophie's like, I know that name, so I know this. But then when Danny realizes yeah, what is da- going on. Danny is crushed. He's like, oh, man. Take He's like, off. oh. Oh. oh, 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 oh! <laughs> His reaction made me laugh so hard. I know it was great. Uh, but, but yeah, okay. So but yeah, um, and you Delilah. talk about Delilah's friendship with Maggie. I also like Delilah's friendship with Gary. Oh yeah, no, uh, Gary. Yeah, her friendship with Gary is great. Um, like they definitely have a brother sister thing. I love that Delilah was there for him with the mom shit. Um, yeah, even even when he's being a little shit, he still brings out the best in her. And I, I mean, they're both kind of shitty to each other, so it, like it it equals out, you know. Kinda like, but I just meant that uh, that whole episode no, no, where he went, yeah, yeah, and and like the, I, I also I shit. also just love their playful jabs with each other, like um, mm-hmm. when 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 she catches Sophie smoking weed and Gary's talking shit on the phone. Oh like, yeah. Yeah, you might want to put that mug away, huh, D? And then and then and then after she has this deep conversation, you then hear Gary's voice and he's like, To be fair, I wasn't eavesdropping. You, you just didn't forgot to hang, hang up. up. Yeah, you just forgot to hang up. I love yeah, I love that. Um um, I loved her like reconciliation arc with Sophie. That was really well done. Um and like also, like the whole touching on the subject of her dad having Alzheimer's, that was really sad. Um, Which, by the way, another TV all star. Yep. <laughs> Known, I know mostly from normal CSI. Oh. In, in CSI. Yep. Yep. But yeah, no, like that was really good. It, it really helped Sophie understand just all the stuff that's on her mom's plate and why she might mm-hmm. feel overwhelmed and why she might turn to someone else if her dad was, you know, not there for her during, you know, and, times like these. And the dad's realization when he realizes that he just put all of his daughter's shit right in front of his granddaughter. Yep. He's like, um, I'm just gonna go. Yep. Uh, but yeah, no, so Delight Del- 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 had a good arc this season. Um, so and I like how, and I like also just real quick mm-hmm. when they're talking about going to the bar, and she's like, "Last time I was single was in an airport where I met my husband." Yep. Oh, also, uh, si- also uh, side note, uh, one one of my fa- one of my favorite. Uh, one of my favorite things with Delilah is um, her, like her back and forth with Regina's mom and how she like plays like middleman. Mm-hmm. I think that's hilarious. Indeed. Um. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, so oh, with 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 Sophie, I I thought the her whole thing with PJ was kind of hilarious. I love that Rome. <laughs> Rome kept trying to like break him up because he's like, no, 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 you could be John's kid. Let's 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 not do the incest thing. Um, yeah, where she kept like crushing on him. Yeah, no, no. I, I love the moment when he like she tried to kiss him and he like he backs up and she like she feels like she feels so shitty and he's like, no, 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 no. I, I mean, I I can't tell you why, but trust me, no. I'm surprised she didn't come back after like it was it was found out that he wasn't like. It, it wasn't an yeah, interesting cause, thing because they have genuine chemistry. I was like, I was kind of feeling it. Well, also with the fact that um, of how big he was in Rome's life. Yeah. Hopefully, he'll come back for season three. Yeah, same. I hope so too. He's really good. Like Chandler Parsons killed it. Uh, you know, it, it's really good to see him as someone other than Coral. <laughs> Which they wasted him. I mean, they wasted a lot of people, if we're being honest. Um, and indeed, I mean, 
just to date this show, they lost another one of their originals just now. Oh, damn. Are you really one of their most badass characters? Oh, damn. Michonne. Oh, yeah. I, I, I had heard about that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, now, last but certainly not least, let us talk last. about... Last? Well, yeah, we got... I mean, all we have left are the Howards. We oh, talked... Oh, yeah. We talked yeah, about Gary. Sure, yeah. We talked about Gary. We talked about Eddie. We talked about Delilah. We talked about Catherine. We talked about Sophie. We talked about Theo. We talked about Danny. We talked about Maggie. All we have left are Rome and Gino, and their stories are interconnected. So literally, they'd be one like they'd be kind of one thing. So yeah, last. I, I, I get that now. I get the mindset. It's just I was doing the math in my head, and I was like. I didn't realize that you were grouping them together. I mean, but anyway, their whole st- yeah, yeah, arguably their whole story is together. Arguably the heaviest story that's, of the yeah, season. and, and th- that's why I saved them for last because <laughs> there's a lot to talk about with them, and it's super heavy because like their story together is heavy, and like their some of their individual stories are pretty heavy. So first, let's talk about some individual stories. We're gonna start with Gina because it's heavy. But it's light heavy. Um, <clears throat> with Gina, one of the big things that they address with her is, of course, her mom and how she felt. Uh, if you've watched Blackish and you know, like, Bo's arc, like Rainbow's arc, uh, it's kind of similar. You know, she grew up in a time where, you know, interracial couples were not, like, as common as they are now and as accepted as they are now. And the fact that her mom looks as white as she does, and, you know, she clearly does not look white. Um, Which also that goes for the spinoff, Mixed-ish. Mm-hmm. And she, uh, and, you know, so she went, and also because she had the opportunity to, her mom sent her to the white schools so she could get a better education and stuff. You know, not really taking into account the kind of effect socially that would have on their daughter. Um, and We even found out this this little horrible gem that she tried to take her to a white salon and tried to do white things on her which, hair and which like literally burned her oh hair. my god which by the by the way y'all like that is you don't do that you always you always always go for black products on black hair black hair is completely different you do not want to you do not want to fuck that up man because that is that is much much harder to repair, uh, like you know that that's that's something that's something that like uh, my sister had to teach my mom uh, when taking care of my niece. Because you know, um, uh, my my mom isn't used to that type of thing. Uh, so, like, it, it's super important. Like, uh, just keep that in mind, people. Um, so yeah, that's that's a little bit of Gina's. Like, it was heavy, but light light well, heavy. And then she also had the thing about the whole um, um, Mr. Useless Andrew, like not wanting to he, he, like he, have his money. Yeah, because the money that she d- was given for the restaurant was donated to her by her uncle, mm-hmm. who uh, yeah, who, who, yeah, who assaulted her. Oh, uh, we you know we're not on YouTube anymore. We can say it. Who assaulted her? As a child. Yeah, but in the way that you're thinking. Uh, but so she didn't want to use his money, so then they went to Andrew to borrow Andrew's money, but then she realized Andrew wasn't taking her decision seriously and he was doing his own thing. And all the PR people were like, Look at this gem that yeah, Andrew yeah. L- found. Look at Andrew's restaurant. This isn't an a- and then it like it took away the identity of her restaurant from her. Thankfully, and Andrew Which, disappeared, so we don't have to deal with that. Uh. Well, well, what happened was they, uh, I think they like double mortgage their apartment or something, mm-hmm. so they could pay him. But I love it when she comes up with that idea initially, and Rome's like, "Okay," and he's already doing it on his phone. Because yep, that's one thing that I love about this yeah, show because... is like the unfaltering relationship between because, them. Because, you know, Gina supported Rome's dream. You know, Rome was making really good money making, you know, shitty, catchy commercials. Um, 
but he was miserable. And so, like, when he wanted mm-hmm. to quit his job and just become a writer, um, like, she was like, okay, bet. Do it. Oh, like, oh make yeah, it that's come right. True. What happened was she, she said that, that they could, like, double mortgage their apartment, but then he said, no, I'm going to accept this Lexus deal that they've been giving me. And I'll use that to pay. Yeah, for yeah, the yeah. He uh, he decided to suck it up and do at least one shitty commercial job so that they could pay. Well, because in his words, before he was just floundering because he didn't know why he was doing it. Now he has a reason. But yeah. now he does know. Yeah, now he has a reason. He's doing it for mm-hmm. her. So yeah, that's uh so that's the lighter stuff on their uh their plot spectrum. Let's uh let's, let's slightly rank it up a little bit, um, and we go to Rome's individual plot line. Oh boy, oh boy. Which one? Because he's he has two. I know he has two, but one happens before the other and leads directly into the other one. So. Oh, you're talking about the PJ one. Uh, well, well, oh no, I was not talking about the PJ one. I was talking about um, I was talking about uh. The uh, the death of the season, and then I was gonna. I mean, because um, I feel like the PJ one is a little heavier. Yeah, just you made me think that you were talking about that one first because that one happened. First. Well, yeah, but uh, but you know, the, the, we're we're, go, we're going in order of lightness. Okay, uh, I'm going along. Just go ahead. Sorry, my bad. Yep. So yeah, um, I so I I look up. D- uh, plot descriptions ahead of time before, like, like a week before the episode, because uh, that's when I get thumbnails and stuff. Because uh, I get them off of the uh, um, ABC Press site, where they have like the the photos, and it it it, mm-hmm. it, gets, it comes with the episode description. And um, from the description, I was like, "Oh, somebody dies. Who the fuck dies?" And I was like, "Well, honestly, the only characters that we've been introduced to that could possibly die are Rome's parents, and Rome looks pretty sad in these pictures. It's probably Rome's mom. I I can tell you that that um, when they started doing multiple episodes with his parents, I was getting worried. I was like, "Oh no, they're focusing." No, on when them. I and, and when I saw Jay Farrell was going to be a guest star in one of the episodes like that that week, I was like, "Oh shit." Somebody died. Like, if they're getting Jay Farrow back, somebody's died. Which I love Jay Farrow, but I hate his brother. Well, I, yeah, I feel like you know you're supposed to hate his brother's character because he's kind of like the. I get it. He's the he's the like the fuck up that gets all the attention because you know Rome actually has his shit together. Which is which is funny though because. Because this show is known to bring in comedy, and yet they bring in someone from SNL, and his character is not that funny. Uh, he has his moments, but yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, so, like, yeah, his mom, his mom, unfortunately passes. Um, and I, and like the, the thing about. I mean, little things is just like with John's death, even though it wasn't suicide, it was sudden, like no one expected it. And I love just the genuine reactions we got out of all of it. And like Rome's mom um, being like uh, the guys all being pallbearers and helping Rome bury the body. That was. Oh, that, that, yeah, almost, that, that almost. Oh killed yeah, me. for sure. When they, when they, when it's like, not only Jay Farrow did, but then, but then like PJ and Gary and yep, all Gary of them. and Eddie and all, yep. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, going to show our whole Eddie trying to take up John role. Eddie was like the first to do yep. it. So yeah, um, so that so that was pretty rough, and that also leads us. And to give him credit, the actor also on top of that, uh, Rome's speech to his mom uh, at his mom's grave. Yeah, that was ph- yeah, that was huge. phenomenal. Um, also, uh, that leads us into the next Rome individual plot line, which has to do with, um, you know, it's kind of a continuation of last season. You know, he and his dad 
I've never seen eye to eye, especially when it comes to mental health stuff. Um, and mm-hmm. then with with this, this really kind of opened his eyes, and he's like, "Look, Pop, I, I when mom told mom told me that you know you've had these similar kind of feelings, but you've never really been able to talk to anybody about it. Mom's not well. Mom's not here anymore. You're gonna need somebody to talk to." So let me take you to somebody to talk to. And then, you know, at first he's like, well, I like this. I, I like your friend Maggie. I can talk to her pretty easy. She beat cancer. I can respect that. I like her. And well, it's like, no, Pop, that's a conflict of interest. She knows you. Trust me. I've tried that. That's not going to work. And at first the dad, the dad is like, okay, I'll, I'll do it, but I'm only talking about your mother. Mm-hmm. And Rome's like, okay, dad. But then the dad reads the script. Yep. And then he's like, well, shit, you didn't tell me. He goes, you tried to what? You tried to do this to yourself? He goes, yeah. He goes, dad, you tried, you shamed me about taking antidepressants. You really think I was going to tell you that I almost tried to kill myself? Like, no. Well, if you're not going to talk, then I'm not going to talk, and I'm not going to go. Yep, to yeah, he was, you know. Acting like a little yeah, kid, honestly. Like childish old man. Uh, but, you know, eventually he does get to it, and, you know, I'm proud of After Regina yeah, comes yeah, in. Yeah, like calls him out on his bullshit. Um, and, you know. And she's like, you think he told me? Yeah. I had to find out through his suicide I letter. found his note in the trash. So... Buck up, shut up, and go to therapy. And he does go to therapy, and I got to give him credit for that one. All right, now we go Mm -hmm. to the... Well, uh, lastly, before we get into what I think you're going to get into, Mm -hmm. we do need to address the Rome PJ. Well, no, I was going to say, this is the last, this is the heaviest individual plot, which is the Rome PJ. What about the baby? That's that that that's after. That's way heavier than Rome and PJ, because that that's okay. a lot more complicated. Because that goes into domestic violence and. All right, I get you. Sorry, my bad. I got to plan. There's a reason I got why. To plan. I'm just the co. I got to plan, Brian. I got to plan. You're the Batman. There's a reason. Yep, I got to plan. So, PJ. I love this friendship. I really hope he comes back because, like, seriously, he, him and Rome have such a dynamic friendship. And I love that just because PJ is younger than him, Rome doesn't talk down to him. He treats him like a person no. above anything else. And that's great. Um, to be fair, he does have, like, fatherly vibe, but in some group friend groups there is like the fatherly mm-hmm. friend which I think that he is going to need PJ after the other plot that we oh, talked yeah, yeah. about mm-hmm. but but yeah the PJ yeah that 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 episode Ooh. made me cry I'm not going to lie to you that episode made me cry uh, that was the I was close that was the first major one that made me cry um, because like, just the moment when they're on the roof, I was like, oh, no. And him talking while having the phone on speakerphone, and then he, everybody hearing him say all these things, it's just like... Yeah, and and Maggie, for all her, for all her BS and mm-hmm. all that, she knows how to handle other oh, people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yes. no. She's a oh, good yeah, she psychologist. Up. She does her job well. I'm not. No, 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 I will never take that away from her. And and I like that moment where she was like, "Now look, st- hey." If she instinctually goes because she's a friend, but then she thinks about it and she's like, "Whoa, hey!" Psychologist training. He trusts Rome. He knows Rome. Let Rome yep, do yep. this. We need to stay behind and let Rome. Yep. Do if it anyone too. else goes, that could set him off. Like let's let's not. Um, Mm-hmm. And I, I, I mean, you know, I figured that he wasn't going to be John's kid uh, just because just because that would just make things a little too complicated. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but just because he's not John's kid does not mean that he can't be 
you know, still involved um, with the group. No. I, I think he's he's a good addition, and I think he even if he and Sophie don't get together because she has that like boyfriend that works at the restaurant now, I think they could still. Even though that's kind of icky. Bit, a little bit. He's not, I mean he's nineteen and she's sixteen. You know, not too big of an age difference, but it, it's there. Yeah, but um, but yeah, and. When you find out, like, why he was so focused on finding out if John was his father or not. Was yeah, he, he was just, yeah. the friend group was well, so nice. Not, and not even so... that. He was trying to, a lot of, like, cause a lot of people, right? A lot of people who, a lot mm-hmm. of people who develop um, depression, anxiety, and, you know, m- many of these, you know, particular mental health issues, a lot of the time, they blame themselves, and one of the biggest questions they have is, uh-huh. "Why am I like this?" Everyone, everyone else uh-huh. in my life is normal. No one in my life feels like this. Why am I the one who feels like this? And that was PJ's whole question. And when he saw, when he heard when he read the script and he saw John killed himself, he's like, "I've had these thoughts, and maybe this will explain it. Maybe if I like can talk to people who knew John." I can find out why I'm like this. I can fi- give myself a reason so I don't have to feel like this. I can find people like who he found to make me not feel this way. And that's really good. It was really well done. I just I still don't understand like Barbara's whole logic about not telling him the truth about his real dad just because his real dad died in 9/11. Like well, I don't think it was that. I think it was more of um, Barbara's husband, PJ's adopt, kind of adoptive father. I mean, that, I mean, I think it was just his arrogance and not wanting to. Yeah, but that's also not wanting to tell him because there were a couple times where she wanted to tell him and he said no. Yeah, I know, but like, come on, that's just stupid. Like, it is, dude. It doesn't. Ma- it doesn't matter that you're not biologically his father. His father died a hero. Or you know, not no, he not, not no. I mean, his father wasn't a responder, but like his father died in a tragic accident, and you were a hero who helped and was there for his mom. Genuinely fell in love and bonded mm-hmm. over a common tragedy, and you helped raise this kid that wasn't even your own. If anything, he would respect you even more. Like. Come on, come on, yeah. man. That's stupid. Like that doesn't make any sense. In- I think like that was one of that was one of those plot lines that was like kinda like with the Eddie one. Like <clears throat> not not as extreme as the Eddie one, but that was kinda like the Eddie death plot line Eddie and his girlfriend death plot line in in the sense that like this could have easily been fixed with one conversation and was just done this way for drama's sake. I I can see that, but I do like the apex of that though, because that speech that like back and forth between Roman and PJ. Oh yeah, Ro- yeah, yeah. The the, oh, that was amazing. But I don't think that has to. I mean, like, I, the, the like him him knowing. I don't think would have taken away from that speech. But like, oh yeah, no, I definitely agree. That was probably one of the b- biggest and best moments of the season. Um, oh, it it was it was indeed. Um, and it's just like, oh yeah, man. Because that episode, like a lot of crap goes down in one episode, and that's just like the mm-hmm. end of it. Yep. So. Like that's the episode where Maggie and Gary break up. Yep. That's the episode Colin goes where, missing. Uh... Oh yeah, that's right. That was the episode too. And then the twist on the Colin thing with the fact that I'm not gonna lie, mm. I was a little fucked up that they did that to the lady. <laughs> well, also you notice though. It wasn't Gary know, who that, did no, it. No, that was one of the first things where I was like, "All right, Maggie, you're a little, you're a little suspicious this season. I don't know how to feel about you." <laughs> Gary had a really mature moment where he 
gave up his, like he gave up his best friend to make that lady happy and you were just like no nah, she's not gonna know this she's old and then the next time we see her that's not my dog oh, I know it's not my dog mm-hmm. but I still love him but <laughs> but yeah that was a little messed up yeah but um so yeah but just all of that going down in one episode and then the apex was the that speech which is yep. like oh boy and they also lingered on them like hugging at the end yep. which was perfect cuz it's just like that was, that was my thumbnail that was my thumbnail um nice um i didn't know this cuz i was marathoning it but could that have been that the was indeed yes mm-hmm. i had a feeling but damn, the mid-season finale was more intense than the actual. I mean, finale, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would agree with that because I mean, some parts weren't necessarily intense, but I got I got hit a little. I got visibly angry with shit that went down in that finale. I got. I don't agree are, with are that. You, hold on. I hold mean, on. I don't. Wait disagree. a second. I, I I misspoke, dude. I was trying to say I don't. I was going to say, oh, yeah. <laughs> there's some shit that goes, the shit that goes down in that finale had me livid. I was angry. Mm-hmm. I was pissed, and we're going to talk about that right now because we're talking about the adoption storyline that Rome and Gina had. Oh boy, what what the a what a that? fucking roller coaster this has been. <laughs> oh my god. This is probably my favorite plot line of the entire show. And oh my god, the emotions. Because, you know, it's 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 a payoff to one of the biggest plot lines of season one. Rome wanting kids and Regina because of her, you know, trauma uh with her uncle not wanting to bring a kid into the world. Um, also, with her career being in the swing that it is, she doesn't want to be uh, off of work um, for you know for that long, especially when she's finally got her own restaurant. Um, and so mm-hmm. they decide to adopt. So they go through all this, all all this. After after Charlie comes mm-hmm. into the world, and they, they realize live mm-hmm. with Charlie. And- they realized kind of like the beauty of it, right? I mean, because they weren't, I mean, they weren't there when Sophie and Danny were, by the time they had come into John's life, Sophie and Danny were like kids. They weren't babies. So, so like they never really mm-hmm. got to experience that part of it. But once they did, they realized like they might want this and they, they'd be great at this. And so they go through the long process of um, adopting. Um, which I'm not gonna lie, this 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 hit, this whole plotline hit a little close for me, um, because uh, my my sister is actually like not she's not uh like she's working on of uh, like working into the process right now of trying to adopt with her husband, uh, so like I was I was watching this like very with a lot of intent. I was like I, I want to see where this goes, um, and oh and, no, oof, big. Old oof. Okay, so they end up finding this. Um, they end up finding a birth mother who chooses them to give her baby to. Um, after they make this like adorable ass video. Um, and um, Rome puts his like commercial making skills yeah to to good use. And also, he almost gets arrested with Gary because Gary starts some shit because Gary was still on his immature bullshit because. He was uh, he was get, going through some rough times post breakup, um, and with him they addressed the whole race yep. thing. And uh, so after that, they, they they find they find this woman Eve, and you know um, you know they get to know her a little bit just so just so they can like you know get a get a good vibe, and they make the mistake of getting too close. Um. First, okay, so I do want to defend this. It does make sense for them to get involved with the whole um, Mark thing because that concerns the safety of the child, right? So that makes a lot of sense. And the destination of the child because 
she put him as unknown on the birth mm-hmm. certificate. And he could, and he, which means that he could, yeah, possibly claim if they went. Mm-hmm. And so they, so they, so they get her the help. So they get her help. They get her, you know, to a shelter, and they they keep Mark away. And uh, by the way, Mark is played by Cisco from Mr. Robot, which that was wild. Also, it was super weird. It was super weird that they got a like they got a dark skinned baby, um, when she was light skinned or not not necessarily light light skinned, but she was lighter skinned, and he was super white, and that baby came out super dark. I was like, wait a minute, y'all couldn't find a lighter baby. She wasn't light. I mean, she wasn't super dark. Hmm. But anyway, like uh, that was a that was a dark dark baby. Like, but any and and anyway, he was, um, he was, he, that was like she 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 she's about like med- she's about medium complexion. Like she's not. I don't feel like I I can even have a dog in this race. But uh, so just moving on. No, but I, uh, I, I, I mean I mean I, I just want to say that was just weird. Like it was like the reverse Randall problem. If you've seen Randall from This Is Us, like. Randall Randall grows up to be Sterling K. Brown, who is a a dark skinned man, uh, like and uh, baby Randall is is dark skinned. Teen Randall is dark skinned, but for some reason, like junior high, um, junior high elementary school Randall is light skinned, like really really light skinned. But anyway, like it's, it's uh, super. I, I, it just it's just really uh, weird that like show when shows do that. Back to the I, I'm, story. I'm sorry though. for making you feel uncomfortable, Ryan. I just want to voice this. I just want to voice this thing. No, I get it. I just feel like I can't say anything. I mean, you can you can also acknowledge that it's weird. Like, just just because you're white doesn't mean you can't say it's not weird. It kind of is, but um, but anyway, like, um, like, back like, to remember the story. Pretty, like, remember Pretty Little Liars? Like, come on, that that one, that one. There's just no excuse for. <laughs> like, seriously, just that, that was my last thing. But yeah, so they they de- they get her protection. They they get Mark off of her back. And this is the point... They get her a restraining order. And this is the point where they should have been like, okay, cool. They even get her into yeah, a shelter. Exactly. Um, yeah, I mentioned that, yeah, I mentioned that in the beginning. Um, yeah, they get... Th- 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 and after that, this should have been the point where they could have... They, they, they should have been like, cool. All right. Um, you're good. We're, we'll, we'll see you when you have the baby. I hope you're okay. If anything comes up in terms of health concerns, please let us know. But because Rome and Gina are such kind-hearted people, they, you know, kind of lost sleep over wondering if she was going to be okay. So they got close to her, which is something you should never do when adopting. Mm-hmm. Because um, it'll lead to certain I- things, which will... And I just want to say, for the first and only time ever, this really shocked the crap out of me. For once, I agreed with Regina's mom. One thousand percent. I was, I was right there with her. I was like, no, but this is not right. You shouldn't be doing this. You don't invite her to the baby shower. Exactly. And and you're like playing the games with her like she I mean, yes, she is the mom. But, like she is not the mo- Come on, man. <sighs> like I get it. You guys are like the greatest people ever, but like dude, there is a limit. <laughs> uh and I, and I get it. Regina probably sees some of herself yeah, in her. Yeah, because she's also a victim of trauma. And I, I again, totally understand but like fam fam when i tell you like i did not i i this was the one this is the one of the times in tv where i was like please don't let me be right please don't let me be right well and i can tell you the big thing that made me know that this was definitely going to happen what Earlier on at the shower, she gave him 
the gender announcement, but she was like, don't tell me, because I don't want to know. If you tell me, it'll be too mm. real. And then, during the delivery, the nurse actually says... Yeah, the gender. The boy mm. says, says the gender. Mm. And they specifically, like, honed in on that. Yep. And when they did, I was like, oh, shit. Yep. <laughs> this is not going to be a friend's type ending here. Nope. Where... Oh no! Nope. <laughs> There's another baby, and, but everything's still gonna be honky dory. You just have twins now. No. Nope. Yeah. No. No. I. I was pissed. I was pissed. Mm-hmm. Bro. Bro. She didn't even wait. Like the, the the part that pissed me off the most is she waited. She fucking waited. She fucking waited. But. They held him and named him. And then they just... Oh! This fucking... While... While Regina was off trying to get Delilah's permission to name him yeah. John. Uh, and, uh, no, and, no, and here's the part that pisses me off the most. Here's the part that pisses me off the most. After she does this, when Rome and Regina rightfully so angrily storm off, she has the nerve to cry and be like, Regina, please! Fuck you! Don't Regina please me! No! Fuck you! Be- and say that because you were so, yeah, so nice. So, so, you're, you're, so you're saying I should have just left you? Huh? You're gonna guilt trip me for wanting to make help you? This is how you repay me? Really? No. Fuck off! Fuck you. And and this show, one thing that I like about the show is when you're when you're grieving or well technically what they experienced was a form of grief. Oh, it was definitely lost. They lost a baby. Like And when you do that though, you don't always say the right thing. And so even though I get it, I was still kinda pissed what Regina said. What did she say? I don't remember what she said. Uh, they had gone home and they were taking down the ultrasound off the fridge and she looked at Rome and she said, this is your fault. You made me want this. Oh, uh, damn. That kind of yeah, pissed and, me and, off and, a little, but I and, get it. And also, it really sucks for, like, they, they gave up everything for that kid, man. Like, I, I know this mm-hmm. is superficial, but, like, Rome traded in his baby, like, like his metaphorical baby, his sports car, for a dad fan. Mm-hmm. Ah. Oh. That, I was so mad. And then, like, you know, on top of that, more finale stuff, you know, again, happy for Gary and Maggie, or... I, I see. I did it. Happy for Jerry and Darcy, uh, like them being happy, them having their cute little cowboy boots moment. Um, and I like the twist of him running to the airport, but just to say that, yeah, uh, I still love as you a friend. As yeah, a friend. you know, I'll I'll be here for you when you come back, and I do value you as a friend. I don't want to lose that. So please, and when you come back, me and Colin want to hear all about what yep. happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was that. That was great. Um, and then you know, big big claps for Eddie. Like you know, he could have easily drank again, but then he heard the old man say the same thing that John used to say during hockey games, and he thought of John, and he put that shot down, and he didn't drink because he's the man. <laughs> but just when he thought he was out of the <laughs> just when he thought he was out of the woods. I was like, no. He's like, I want to go home, do our vows now. And, even though it'll just be the two of us, because I yeah, love you. Everything yeah, in life is yeah, Don't and, worry. Yeah, I, and I had a feeling that this was going to happen. Literally, uh, so me and Elizabeth were watching it, and we both said at the same time, he's going to get hit by a car. I, I thought maybe the the dead girl's father was going to come in. No, I was, no we both thought, because like, cause they focused on the street. I was like, oh, he's going to get hit by a car. He's not paying attention. He's on the phone. He's going to get hit by a car. Which, lo and behold, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Right? And that's where they end, and that's where I they, f- end it. It's the, uh, they do another fucking cliffhanger. 
Because of course they do. But, but yeah, um, I I know this is a little bit of speculation, but I feel though that the reason why they ended that like last little random subplot with Eddie was because the girl's dad is going to be a red herring. Yeah, I I really I really do. Because I feel because I feel like knowing this show, that's going to be a hit and run. Mm-hmm. Like that person isn't gonna stay around and say, "Hey, buddy, yep, you okay?" it's gonna be a hit and run. Um, but yeah, no. I, but I, I really hope they put that stupid, like, "Did Eddie kill his first girlfriend?" plotline to bed because we all know he didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Like, and even and like, not to be mean, but even if he did, why would you just? Why wouldn't you just take that to the grave, Lindsay? Why would you tell that to him? Especially when he's gotten all his shit together. Like, I know. go by Pretty Little Liars rules, Lindsay. Two can keep a secret if one of them is dead. And one of them is dead. So, it's cool. Like, not to be mean. Not to be morbid. But I, I, I gotta throw some comedy in here somewhere. Cause it's... Well, to be fair, they did kind of explain it why she brought it up. It's still unfair. Because apparently it had been like hitting her. Still not fi- it's still not fair to Eddie. But yeah, I know. Um, I didn't oh, yeah. say it was. I just said that they kind of explained why she, she brought it up. Because apparently she was thinking about it. Just alcohol kind of numbed the whole situation. I mean, it is kind of an experience if you think your brother killed somebody and you hide evidence for mm-hmm. him. But yeah, but we still. all know he didn't actually do it. Like, that's way, it's way too. I wonder if the reason why she brought it up because she thought. No, I think she definitely thinks he did. But knowing TV as well as I do and how they framed it, there's no way he actually did. No. Like. Also, it was kind of a little weird and suspicious that. The moment after she brings up the lake is when he has. Yeah, the and, and also, also the react the reactions of the family of the girl are just too convenient to 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 make it be like that. They're trying to frame it so hard that Eddie did it that I don't think he did it. Like no, again, it's one. Of, it's clear they they showed at the end he remembers yeah, what he happened yeah he he tried to he he tried to rescue finale. her but he couldn't do it because he was too drunk she fell off because they were drunk mm-hmm. af and he tried to save her and you know couldn't. i might be pretty shit at dream analysis that was probably that was one of my lower psych grades but the dream is pretty the dream symbolism is pretty clear it's survivor's guilt it's not i killed it's not a i killed someone dream no and the alcohol was because he was mm-hmm. drunk at the time. And the John thing was because he yeah, feels a little bit with of John, survivor's guilt with John. Especially because he slept with John's wife. Yeah, no, like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And uh, just like the, uh, just like with the PJ thing, how that could be solved quickly, but it was drama for drama's sake. Like, I feel like this was com- like a more extreme version where it's drama for drama's sake. The PJ thing had a purpose because it led to the whole Rome thing and that was like ideal. I don't see a purpose for this. Also, talking about things that kind of don't see a purpose for that I think is a negative. The scene where they went to the friend's remission party, that was great. I love that Uh, scene. It was just, Um, it was yeah. Especially with that side mm-hmm. act. Yeah, I think it was just a, like a red herring for Maggie's cancer. No. No. That's not what I'm getting to. Okay. I'm leading to something. I thought that that was good, and I love that scene. Especially when Maggie and Maggie and Gary stood up and like separately were like, yeah, we're gonna support you. I loved all that. But then the elevator down from it where they had the the dream fake out thing of him of them saying that they love each other yep. and then kissing. I yeah, did not honestly, like that. I wasn't into Gary and Maggie's relationship most of this season. Well I I like them as a couple, but I'm just saying that 
what was the purpose of that? To say that Gary still yeah, in we, love with yeah. her? I Even would say Danny we already knew, knew that. that. Everybody already knew that. Everybody who with two eyes and ears can tell you that. Uh, Colin could have told you that. Uh, if he could speak. Which, by the way, I do love, uh, just a side note, we talk about the kid actors. I also like the dog actor, because just like, whoever is the trainer or the dog itself, amazing personality. Yep. Like, when him and Darcy wake up and he's like, see, he can't even yeah, look we, we at did, us. Yeah, we, yeah, we did some very filthy night. things. Call him. And then he starts looking at them again, and she mentions... Yeah, round two, an and then he's like, and then Colin, and look away, and Colin looks away. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love that. So yeah, great episode. Um, I mean, great, not, not just great episode, great season. Cannot wait for season three. I covered all of season two in its entirety um, on Vlair, or at least I covered mo- you know the beginning of the season on YouTube, and then my YouTube channel got shut down, and then I covered the rest of it on Vlair. Um... Mm-hmm. So yeah, like it, it's fantastic. I cannot wait to cover it. Uh, like next next year, uh, it's been one of my favorite shows to cover on a weekly basis. Um, along with this is us. Uh, so you know, phenomenal, phenomenal show. Uh, any closing thoughts before we get into plugs? Well, did you want to do any quick speculation, or did we, we kinda, already cover we, all we that? We basically oh. already did that. I don't really see anything. That I, I, wanna, I would want to speculate. I just want to see okay, one ahead. thing, though. Is somebody going to get pregnant? Because it seems like all the seasons end with a birth. Yeah. Mm, uh, I don't really see Regina doing it. And I don't see Catherine getting pregnant again, especially with her career in the state that it is. I don't think so. I know. It's just it's a weird coincidence that season one and season two ended yeah. with a baby birth. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was a funny thing. But yeah, we're reaching the end. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and say that uh, what's coming up for me is uh, honestly not much. Um, I haven't done it yet, but coming up on my lair, I will finally review Harley, the first episode of season also, two. Also, Onward, Onward is on Disney okay. Plus if you want to do that. Uh, I might. I might. But then also oh, coming up next week is uh, Nancy Ralph is back Wells. too. Uh, Nancy is back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, then I'm doing that one too. Um, then continuing Harley ne- uh, uh, next season of Lair. Maybe a little thing in between here and there. Don't know just yet. Um, but thanks to the I was going to say, you said the word. This isn't you two. <laughs> Thanks to Corona, all the show, most of the shows are still on break, so it's a little light for me. But um, yeah, Jay? so um, with me, uh, I've got uh, stuff that came out this week. I I did uh, recently. I did a uh, season a season three premiere of Ducktales. Woo! Uh, love Ducktales, uh, the reboot. Uh, Goofy was in this ep- was in the premiere. That was awesome. I'm hoping we get Goof Troop back. Uh, that would be amazing. Goofy, y'all. He's one. Of, he's my personal favorite of the Mickey crew. Um, Are you kidding me? He's mine. Well, I mean, yep. yeah. Goofy, Goofy, Goofy's my guy. I was, I was so hyped. <laughs> Goofy showed up, and I was. We'll go there. I was like, Goofy. Oh shit. Yeah, but yeah, so spoiler for DuckTales, uh, season, the season three premiere of DuckTales. Uh, also, Don Cheadle came back to voice Donald Duck again, and that was great. Um, so that was funny. Um, so I did DuckTales. I did the Konosuba anime movie review, uh, which uh, they released that for free on Crunchyroll because Corona stopped the, uh, the U.S. dub release, or the U.S. release in theaters. So Crunchyroll was like, fuck it, we'll just put it on here for free. Y'all don't even need a premium, uh, you don't even need a premium account to watch it, so you can watch it if you want to. Um, so there's that. I'm also doing a bunch of anime, because Japan said, Corona what? <laughs> We're still doing all our shows. So, 
I'm going to do a bunch of the uh, the spring anime. I know I'm doing Ka- uh, Kaguya-sama, Tower of God, uh, ReZero got pushed back. I'll, I'm, I'm still figuring out the full list, but I know I'm doing Tower of God and Kaguya-sama. Um, so that's going to be fun. Enjoyed that a lot. I'm probably going to do the, um, the the villainous one. The uh, I got reinc- um, I got reincarnated as a villainous or whatever because uh, that first episode is pretty solid. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing anime stuff again. Uh, I'm going to do uh, another fate discussion with Tony um, for my Throne of Heroes series, talking about Arashigal. So that'll be a lot of fun because Arashigal is one of my like top tier fate waifus. Uh, so yeah. Um, got a lot of fun content for you guys. Um, I'm going to finally put up a review of Onward at some point because uh, I didn't want to do it when uh, it first came out because not many people got to see it because of Corona. So now I'm going to be able to do it. Um, and I'm going to put out an In the Dark um, Season 1 video, uh, which leads us into Channel Chasers, which next week will also be an In the Dark discussion for Season 1 because Season 2 is coming out uh, a week after next. So... Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, this and is you talk Ryan. about show that I don't know where they're going to go from here. Well, I mean, we, we know the direction, but we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, uh, it's going to be it's going to be awesome. This is a show that Brian actually, you know, was the one that was championing. And like I waited until it got renewed to, to watch uh, because I was not that year in particular. We got some pretty rough cancellations, so I wasn't taking chances anymore. Uh, <laughs> So I was like, yeah, I'll wait till it gets renewed. And then it got renewed, and then I got a bunch of shows in the way. But then Corona cleared my schedule, so I got to do it. Yep. But that is going to be actually, surprisingly, an interesting discussion. Yeah, so that'll be fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We are really getting close to time, so I'm just going to say peace. Peace.